Number two, stop doing all the other crap and stuff that's not producing the one thing produces. Because I'm so happy to see you. It's been a hundred years. I know, right? Oh my goodness. I don't think I've actually, we've talked on the phone, but I haven't actually gotten to see you face to face. Oh, it's been years. Yeah. Craig, I don't know if you know what we do here and the concept of this podcast and how we got started. Essentially what happened is, you know, I have this theory, right? That everybody like comes, comes through the goes comes in this world and goes through this journey. And in the process, they're collecting all these buckets, right? right. Some of the buckets are empty. Some are full, some are overflowing. And we're filled with like surrounded by um, all these givers. And what I found is a lot of folks are like giving from their buckets that aren't overflowing and then it goes empty. And I wanted to set up an opportunity for those who are givers to give from their overflowing buckets. So those of us who have that bucket that's not overflowing in that area can bring our buckets over. You can overflow into us until we're overflowing and then we just keep just passing it on. I love that. I love that. And that's biblical too, right? So that's good. Absolutely. And I appreciate you for just being so open to this because I literally just reached out to you and you said, yeah, sure. And I just thought that's so wonderful that you were so open to do that because um, you are a magnificent leader. And oh, very that's nice. how I met you is you were leading your team essentially at yep. team national, right? Yes, that's right. And you would do trainings where you would pour into people, teach them, help them grow, help them define goals that they didn't know that were possible, help them learn how to dream dreams that they didn't even know existed. Yes. And you're a master at that. Huh. Well, it's um, it's something I definitely have a passion for, for sure. And, and that's what attracted me to you, because in all the rooms I was in and meetings I was in, you know, you see lots of different kinds of people. But you and I connected in that room and there were several people in that room. But you and I connected very quickly because of that similar mindset. Honestly, we didn't have a lot, a lot of things in common, some things in common, but it was mindset that connected us very quickly. And I feel like even though we don't visit often, I feel very connected to you for that reason, because you are a similar type leader, giver, trainer, all the above. Well, and, and I think the other thing that we're both really great at is we take action quickly. We're quick to make decisions. Yes. For we sure. make decisions. We do the activity needed in order to accomplish the decision that we made. Yes. Well, I mean, the wise ones, if you go back and read the, you know, the greats, they always say you only need about 80% of the information to really make an excellent decision. And people that are successful, if you study history and those folks that are really successful in life and all walks of life, they're quick decision makers. They don't overanalyze, they get enough information and then they move forward because the little things can be corrected for, right? And you and I both Absolutely. believe that. Yeah. And, and every decision you make, I, I started having this concept of every decision I make is a good decision. It either works out or I got a lesson out of it. Yep. So it was a good decision either way. That's right. As John Maxwell <laughs> says, you either win or you learn, but both times you're right. Both times you're right. So what do you think are some of the lessons that you have learned that you can share? So maybe we can not have to have those lessons so personally. Yeah. So I heard this the other day and I've always been, I'm, I'm 54. I probably started studying personal development. My first book to read was See You at the Top by our famous Zig Ziglar from Dallas, okay. Texas, right? But I was in Louisiana. Somehow I got a hold of this book, probably one of my dad's books that I took from him because he was a reader. 
And I started reading this book at, at um, 17 years old, I believe I was. Okay, wow. so 37 years ago. And he had a different mindset than any teacher I had heard from, coach, any leaders in my life. I just had not heard this mindset that Zig Ziglar was teaching. And funny story. So I had this basketball. We grew up very... Um, probably um, just lower means, you know, we worked really hard. My family was in construction. We worked a lot of jobs. We worked weekends, the kids worked. So our basketball goal was a steel pipe my dad had welded in the yard. We did have a little concrete to park on. So you move the cars, the steel pipe came up. There was no backboard yet. So it was just a rim stuck out from the steel pipe. So if you missed, it just went straight over the steel pipe into the woods and briars and you got all laid up going to get the basketball goal. So I said, I'm going to put a four by eight sheet of plywood up there to hit the ball against. So dad right. helped me do that. And I'm reading this book, see at the top. And I thought, I'm, I said, dad, is it okay if I paint the basketball goal? He said, sure, son. Cause I was out there every day shooting baskets. So at the top of the goal, I put in big, bold letters, see you at the top. So for probably four years, that was at the top of our basketball goal with my older brother, younger sister. We all played basketball every week on that. But you talk about inking something into your mind. And so I continue to read and develop. And so, so years later, I actually did a um, talk with uh, Tom, big son, and I told him that story about his dad and the impact he had had on me. So that that's where my personal development started was see at the top Zig Ziglar. Yes. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. So you probably have continued that kind of a habit that worked out so well. Yes. What do you have painted across now your goal? Like your uh, goal post? Great question, Bettina. You're a great interviewer. So I would say at one point, uh, we became millionaires during the path of construction and real estate. Michelle was a real estate agent, as you know, for 10 years. And I've, I've been in construction a long time and then learned how to develop and in real estate, smaller projects, nothing with multi high rises or anything, but smaller projects. So as we became a millionaire, I thought, well, that's great. And I started reading Sam Walton. The one thing that was amazing about Sam Walton is he didn't just become a millionaire, but he helped hundreds and hundreds, now thousands of people become millionaires because they got in his draft. Kind of like if you think of NASCAR when they're going around the track, right? If you're in somebody's draft, even if you're not first, if you're third wow. or fourth or fifth, it's a lot faster. You see them, if they get out of the draft, what happens? They yes. go to the back. Right. And in life, I think people sometimes try to reinvent the wheel. And I thought, man, I don't have to be real smart. If I can get in the draft of these Zig Ziglar's of the world. Right. And so I continued that. Well, Sam Walton was one of those guys that he created a draft and mm -hmm. thousands of people followed him and became millionaires. And I thought, okay, it's one thing to become a millionaire. It's another thing to help others become a millionaire. So I set a goal to help 10, I just have picked the number out of there, 10 people become millionaires and we achieved that in less than 10 years from setting that goal, okay? So now what I've got written across the board, it's a it's a little bigger goal and, and that's to help my children become millionaires and eventually my grandchildren, not from inheritance, which they will, but from what they create and they generate as entrepreneurs. Oh, I love that. And I love that it's not from inheritance because yes. you can, you're teaching them how to create wealth and build wealth. Yes. Now I know Christian is also in real estate, been licensed eight years and yes. doing great. And, through that, you guys have introduced so many other realtors um, to a model that has been revolutionary. What are so what does that look like for you? Like, what do you see like 
wealth building look like for your children? Yeah, so Christian is a is a realtor, and one thing that he took a path out of school, went to a really nice school there in Frisco. We paid a lot of money for Legacy Christian. Great culture, but one thing that I disagreed with the leadership on was you have to go to college, and they had like a 99.9% .9 of kids that went to college, right? That's what they were preparing it for. Okay. So I said, son, what do you want to do? This was a year before before his senior year. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to be an entrepreneur. And I said, okay, well, there's different paths because they were trying to put him in a box. Right. And I said, you can go to college, learn to be an entrepreneur, whether it's real estate or business, or you can go another path. You're always going to be learning. Again, go back to the Zig Ziglar. I started yes. learning from mentors. So. I wanted them to have that path. Well, he chose not to go to college, but to enroll in seminars and go to events and listen to podcasts and YouTube now, all this learning. So he's a very visual, fast learner. Sitting in school is very frustrating for him. As uh, it was my son's the same way. My son is <laughs> the exact same way. Everybody thought he should go to college, right? And he yeah. chose we, he's gone to Tony Robbins, Brennan Burchard. He's been through seminars, such a better experience. And it's much more, he'd rather do it now yes. than to have to sit through another lecture and, or do tedious works, like just tedious work. Right. Not well, the one thing about that is Christian worked. He has continued to work from the day he graduated high school full time and then learn on the side, right? So go back wow. to Jim Rohn says, work your day job during the day, but work on your fortune at night and the weekends. The same principle. So if you're yeah. working on your fortune, that could be working on you. The best thing to invest in, Warren Buffett said, is yourself, right? The, one of the richest men ever to live. So I want my kids to do that. So we started them. I was in a personal development culture in Team National. We started them on little 50 to 100 page, these little books, you see. And we uh -huh. paid them to read. I got that from John Maxwell. His dad paid him to read. He didn't pay him for a job. We do the same thing. We yeah. do the exact same thing. We pay two fifty a book, uh, two fifty a book with the one pager. Yeah. And yeah. so what a great way to incentivize the kids. And so they became readers and now listeners, um, both of them. Now my daughter chose the, to go into business and graduated from Dallas Baptist with a business degree. So she decided she needed a little bit of learning outside Craig and Michelle's home. And she did grow <laughs> up. Right. And yes. that helped her a lot got a job in the vice president's office. So she was also learning, but working at the same time. I think people miss that Bettina in that don't take four years or one year or one month and just learn, learn and apply or apply and learn. If all you can do, if you're 40, 50 hour a week work in your real estate or other business or job, your learning might be five or 10 hours a week. That's okay. Right. I yes. think the way our bodies were designed by God is we need to uh, practice, refine, practice, refine. And that's how yeah. we become better. Right. We're all Absolutely. blessed with talents and abilities. And then it's our job to parable the talents. Are you going to stay a one talent? Are you going to be a two talent, five talent or 10 talent? Right. How much can you develop that in the time we have here on this earth? Exactly. And when, and when you take that action, you get that feedback that yes. allows you to refine, act, feedback, refine, act, yes. feedback, refine. And, uh, I, and it's, I love that you said that because you learn and you take action and because so many people they'll take action without learning or they'll learn without action. Yes. The two go hand in hand. Yes. Both, both, categories of just learning or just taking action are stuck. That's where we get stuck is either we're trying to learn too much or we're trying to just take action and do the same thing over and over again. So what do you think it is that keeps people from, from doing both? Because like, like we say this and we can give analogies and examples all day. Like we can tell people like you can, 
you, we can talk about riding a bike, but until you get on that bike and start pedaling, you're just not going to be able to ride a bike. But you know, there's people that get stuck. Yeah. And they won't get on the bike. What? How? How have you? Because you are a great leader, and you have gotten people to, to when they were afraid, scared, uncomfortable, to have that faith to move forward. One thing, and, it, and this totally applies to real estate, is I think you got to be in the right circle. I call it alignment. So you have to be aligned with the right people, whether you're in a real estate office, uh, whether you're in a real estate company, what, whatever space you're in, who are you picking to choose time? Or who are you choosing to spend time with, right? Yes. Um, and I go back a quick story. When Michelle started in real estate in Louisiana, there was a gent, two gentlemen in her office and she was brand new. She just wanted to do something and be a, a mom and have flexibility, but earn some income, right? Very uh, common. Right? Yes. The ladies yes. in the real estate space do that. So, but there was two full-time realtors in her office that were superstars. She was a cola maker. And I said, why don't you go sit in their office and ask them what you can do for them? Maybe you could help them fill out a report or go look at a property. And she needed activity, right? Mm. They needed help. And I said, what's going to happen is they're going to, some of that wisdom is going to drip off and fall into your plate. And that's exactly what happened. Those two gentlemen today, both very, very successful. What Michelle learned and eventually Michelle got in their draft and learned a lot from them and they became kind of her mentors in real estate. Yeah. So and I would were, say find somebody and, and she didn't have to pay them. She got that for free, but she offered something. Yes. Like, could I sit at your open house? Right. Or could I go do a showing for you or whatever? She offered her service and in turn, she was going to get a return of a mentor. Isn't it true when you find that person who's willing and ambitious and just has that desire, you want, you're rooting for them. You're, you're willing to just give them every, every tool in your toolbox and just say, here, use all these tools. If when you find that person. Yes. Well, everybody needs experience, but how do you go get experience? Uh, <laughs> I say, go get experience. Well, how do I go get experience? Right? So what you do, maybe you don't have any money. Maybe you can't afford to go to the seminar or travel to the national convention or invest. I mean, anybody can get on podcasts for free now. Right. But, but one thing everybody has is time. So it, again, it's the, it's the sowing and reaping. So what are you planting in the ground? So mm -hmm. if you plant some good time, people say, well, I need to learn how to do real estate or construction or development. Okay. So time. Invest, so time, time, but yeah. invest your time, not in just studying, but in getting around great people. Cause as you said, great people, want to bring up other people that's in our natural someone lots of people helped us yeah we return that favor right absolutely with someone with the right attitude go back to zig ziglar he taught me to have a right attitude he said always invest 50 hours for 40 hours pay oh yeah because the 10 hours is your investment back to your employer back to your business. He said, you won't see the investment immediately, but eventually either that person or someone else will. So think about when you go to eat, Bettina, mm -hmm. and you and Juan go to eat and you have a great waiter wait on you. Do you ever talk to that person about their career path? I do. Yeah. Is this is your final landing spot. Like, is this where you want to end up? Right. If I find somebody with a great attitude, I might hire that person, help them get into real estate, something. Right. So that's where the extra investment of time then is going to so reap back into your success. 100%. Today, I still hang around people that are more successful than me. I was on a conference call earlier with some of them, investors that are, you know, centimillionaires, hundred millionaires and up. Right. Right. 
because I'm trying to learn how to get to that next level. That's fun. It's fun. It's, yeah. it's and I love that it's an infinite game for you. Yes. And like you're not, this isn't your work. This isn't something you have to trudge through. This yeah. is your joy. Yes. And mine is kingdom minded eventually for my kids and, and ultimately for Michelle and I, we've been very blessed, you know, the properties, the, the toys, all the travel and all that. Um, my why is what, what can I, who can I impact? Mm -hmm. Not only through giving, through church, through helping people that are less fortunate, but, but who can I impact long term by continuing to put my efforts and ability back into the marketplace? So have there, so you've been doing this for a long time. What kept you from just being like, I'm tired of this. Like so many people, they go in, they do, this is 30 years you've been, yeah. you've been in this. And I have never heard you just, and I'm sure there's a day where you're just like, oh, but you still continue to show up. You still have the energy and the giving. How do you do that? You know, everybody has their days, right? I mean, we all have our moments and our days and, and um, it's summertime and people are taking vacation and vacation is good, right? Like I'm going to take this next week off and, and just take some time with Michelle and, and, and unplug. And I, I think that's number one. I was taught, my dad always took us on vacation in the summer again. We rode to Colorado in the back of a camper truck. Today, they would get arrested for that, right? So, <laughs> literally. Don't say that. I yeah. think it's like my RV, you know, we have the kids in the back of the RV, but it's not a pull behind. And we did that on purpose. And so, yeah. I, I'm cooking. I, know, I hope nobody gets on to me about this. I've cooked going down the highway. Such a bad idea. Open yeah. flames. But, hey. Yeah. So, but, vacation could be a night out. It could be a day off. In other words... I've learned to know when I need recharging, number one, right? It's just like I teach what iPhone. Are signs? What one are of the signs the, that you need to be recharged? So an iPhone is one of the greatest things ever designed. But after about three days, it's just a piece of glass and stuff, right? It's no right. good, right? right? We're the same way. God built us for press. And he built us for rest. So we're supposed to press and then we're supposed to rest. That's why we sleep seven, eight hours a night. Right. Right. So, um, I forget what your question was, but, um, well, like, so like, yes, like a couple of days ago on our mastermind, we were talking about how form, uh, like the NASCAR formula one high performance vehicles, right. They take pit stops, not when yeah. they need it. They take pit stops as scheduled. My question to you is more along the lines of, how do you know, like, what is it like you, you learn somehow along the way to either schedule it or recognize when you need it? Like maybe it's scheduled, but I need an extra break. Scheduled. So one thing I did, and I can't remember, it's probably been 10 years ago. I went through Darren Hardy's insane productivity. It's a 12 week intense and wow. it's basically teaches you how to manage your time, right? We all have the same amount of time and it teaches you how to be really productive, but still have a lot of time to recharge and rest. I still follow that plan 10 years later. I still listen to him every day. He's got a Darren Daly. That's a two to five minute trite. Right? It's free because I know that he speaks my language. I've seen him in person, met with him, talked with him, been to a lot of his seminars. So I think you got to find people again, that you relate to that can help guide you and direct you, whether it's a personal coach or he's a coach from a distance. Right. Right. And so when I struggle with that, I go back to his material. And then secondly, Michelle is a good check for that because she runs at a lot slower speed than I do. She balances. She, has, she balances me and she has incredible insight and wisdom and she sees my blind spots. Like if I'm pressing, 
and I'm trying for the top of the mountain, a goal, and I'm trying to hit this millions of dollars or number on the team or whatever it is, we have a lot of talks daily and we may go on a walk around the neighborhood or on the boat or whatever it is. And I say, tell me what I'm not seeing. Ah, that's good. So to have someone in your life that helps you see the blind spots, right? Yeah. Cause obviously like driving the car, I can't see behind me, but right. I mean, turn around the other way can. So, having Michelle in my life like that and then mentors from a distance has probably helped me. But I mean, no one's perfect and you learn over time. Okay. Here's what I can do. And I can't match up against, uh, you know, uh, one of these high performers, Elon Musk that runs 1700 companies and does trillions of dollars. But I, that's not my role on earth. My role on earth is to be the best Craig. Yes. You're so I try to be the best Craig every day and I wake up, and at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to ask God, Hey, I'm doing my best. Show me how I can do better. Put people around me again, alignments, you know, the old saying, hang out with five millionaires and you'll become one. Yeah. Right. So it's the alignments of people and I've gotten off track before <laughs> I've gotten in business and everyone does and deals with the wrong people mm. and the wrong person can make a good deal bad. So there was a lesson learned there. Yes. So you're, you won't, how do you reckon? So you've gone in with some, you know, didn't align, right? You learned some lessons. What do you think are the lessons that you've learned from that so that we don't have to repeat those lessons? The who WHO is more important than the what. So how Every do you recognize when you see the who? Like when I saw you, I said, oh, he's the who. How do yeah. you recognize the who? Like what is it? Is it just you had seen a lot of people. Huh? You had seen a lot of people. You know, I wasn't the first person you'd ever talk to, right? So mm. another book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I got the book in 1999. My mom gave it to me. That's another key moment in personal development. He has so many principles in there. We, you could do a whole call on that, right? I'm sure you have. But one thing on the who he said, when you're trying to find a good real estate deal, let's say you're looking for a great house to invest in. He said, go look at a hundred of them before you buy one. You're like, well, that's a lot of work. It's the practice of seeing the wrong ones, the wrong ones, the wrong ones. You're like, well, that's the right one. Cause you're, you can quickly compare it to the wrong ones. Same thing with yes. People. Same thing with people, oh. right? Don't go into business with someone until you've looked at a lot of prospective business partners. Oh, that's great advice. That's great advice. So really, put in the energy to do the exploring and the discovery and the yes. and the inquisitions. Um, networking groups. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do that, right? To get around people. You don't actually have to be looking at a business deal, just being around people, talking, having conversations, you're going to learn, you know, who's the right one for you to be aligned with in business with, or a customer of yours. I mean, I've had that same philosophy with customers in the construction business. I vet them as much as I vet business partners. People say, oh, I'll take it. If they've got a deal, I'll take it. I'll go list that house and it's going to waste <laughs> your time. It's going to waste your resources. They're not going to, you know, do you right. I mean, you're going to, it's a lot of wasted energy, even with customers. Yes. I found that my best clients are referrals. Yes. For my friends and people, we just got a call today the most beautiful clients. They're so cool. They're so much fun. They're a referral. Yes. You're <laughs> your network, right? Your network is your net worth. So let me ask you, if you were going to give me like the highlights, like, like this is the, like, I got these three, these five things out of this that changed my life. And when I come across somebody that's, you know, this is the advice I give them because yeah. from my experience, if they can't make it there today, like they got to know this. All right. So number one, 
If your business is selling houses, let's just take it to real estate. Okay. Cause you're a real estate person. If your business is selling houses, whether you're listing or showing, what is your, um, what's your number one way that you get business? Is it phone calls? Is it online? Is it referrals? Is it networking? Okay. So spend, he said, put a stopwatch around your neck. Okay. Okay. And when you're actually doing that activity, okay, let's say it's phone calls in your eight hour day before you dial the number, hit the stopwatch. When you get off the phone, hit the stopwatch. Okay. He said, I bet you, you don't spend more than one hour doing the activity that creates 90% of your business. Stopwatch. That's I love that. Okay. I'm actually putting that down. Then now see if you can get that hour to two hours. Okay. He said, your business won't double, it'll quadruple, whatever your business is it and whatever out. that activity is. Wow. That's great. What else could he say? I love that. That, that is brilliant because we've talked about it. We talked about trekking, tracking and things like that, but having that physical stopwatch like that. When so people look at the list, they look at the other listings. They do all these things that are non-productive. They, and they get home like, honey, I have worked a long day and I, okay, but let's, <laughs> How much time out of the eight hours were you really productive in your one thing? Again, you know, Gary Keller writes a book that your one thing, right? So what's your one thing? You got to identify your one thing and then time that. That's okay. fantastic. Number two, stop doing all the other crap and stuff that's not producing the one thing produces because you need more time doing the one thing, the social media, the going to lunch with, the people that are non-producers that there's lots of stuff that we need to cut out of our calendar. The clutter. Yes. And, and delete and it. He says, it. There's a big delete button. And he said, I'm not talking about forever. You do this for 30 days. It's a 30 day sprint. Okay. Number one, track the income producing activity is what I call it. IPAs. Yes. How much time during the day are you spending on IPAs, the income producing activity? Number two, delete everything you can delete for 30 days. If you don't have to go to the grocery store, if you don't have to mow your grass, if you don't have to get on social media, all those other things, that's going to not only create time, it's going to create energy. We need yes. energy to do the income producing activities. And consider, cutting out that social media thing. Yes. All Number three, find out your sweet spot. But Tina, if I was coaching you, I would say what two hours in the clock are your best two hours of the day? What two hours are your best two hours? Is it morning? Is it afternoon for you? What is it? It's mornings for sure. It used to be midnight, but I've aged. So now it's switched to mornings. Go seven to nine, eight to 10. Absolutely. Actually, it's more like six to eight. Okay. Six to eight. So block everything out, do nothing else during, from six to eight, except income reducing activities. Okay. Perfect. And he says, do a 90 minute, turn off your phone, turn off your computer, everything that's not having to do with whatever your income reducing activity is, turn it off for the, and he calls them 90 minute chunks. Yes. During your prime time, my prime time is similar to yours. It's about seven to nine. I do not schedule meetings with, you know, vendors. I don't schedule meetings to look at other things. My seven to nine is very protected in my life. What are you doing seven to nine right now in your life right now? What does your seven to nine look like? So my primary in the construction business is sales, client relations, and making sure the jobs are done on time. Yeah. So first thing I do is I get all the other men working. I probably got a hundred men working for me right now with subs and everything. Okay. So I, first thing I do probably seven to eight is make sure they're all working, running. Yeah. yeah. Getting all the ants moving, right? Remove all the obstacles. Now I've got them moving. 
Now I'm going to get moving at the office and contact, follow up, get out proposals, um, all those things that are sales generating activities. Excellent. That's those a, are the that's six things that I do every morning. Yes. Yes. Uh, very similar. I, I work on um, my first thing is, okay, what is it that, what, does everybody know what they're doing today? Yes. Right. I, my goal is because if it's about me, I'm going to burn out. Yes. I, and it's, something's happened. I fizzle out around noonish, yeah. 11, 12. I just, I fizzle out. It doesn't mean that I don't do things in the afternoon, like we're visiting in the afternoon. Right. But I do this fun part in the afternoon, but that high thinking where I have to use a high portion of my processing. Yes. I do that. I love people that. Never, I think a lot of people struggle because they never learn where their sweet spot is. And not everybody is morning like you and I. Michelle's is the evening. Mm -hmm. So I said, just find that and, and do it during that time. Right. So that's, so that's three. The third thing was sweet spot. Do you have a four and a five? I know, I'm, I know I, I'm pressing. I know I said three to five. Now I'm pressing for four and five. I would keep it to three. I mean, it's a great program. I would say those three, you know, probably lastly, if I had to sprinkle the fertilizer on everything, it would be belief in um, a higher power that created us, belief in yourself, and then belief in what you're doing as far as the industry, if it's real estate, construction. I think our activity, I know our activity is directly related to our belief. So whatever that fertilizer is that you can sprinkle on those key activities, the belief can 10 exit, right? You can take a million dollar business to 10 million, a $10 million business to a hundred million. I mean, it, it'll work at whatever, however many zeros their math makes it. So. So when somebody has doubt, cause I, I agree completely. That belief is critical. And you've seen this, these people, they, they want to believe, they have a seed of doubt, which, oh, it's a, it's a weed of doubt. How do we kill that weed of doubt? All right. So here's my number five. Four was belief. And number five um, is you've got to delete some people in your life mm. for a period of time. And you've got to, you don't have to cut your family out, but you've got to limit your time with certain people. Certain people, um, our energy drainers, um, the energy bus, right? The energy bus is a great book. Um, I'm going blank on his name. I've taught on his program. So, um, but he says, it's a great story about you riding the energy bus, but we go along during our day and all of a sudden we got a negative person at the drive through or this person cuts us off on the road or a coworker or whatever it is protecting yourself from that negative person because they're sucking the energy that you need energy to hit your goals and dreams. And a lot of that doubt, honey, I had this great conversation today and I'm about to sell this job. You've never sold one in the past. Why do you think you're going to sell this one? Oof. Just take yeah. the that you're out, right? So sometimes it's a spouse. That's the unfortunate news. Luckily I have a great spouse. Not everyone does, right? Right. Limiting, protecting your mind. So Solomon, I was the business person ever lived said, protect your heart, protect your mind. I was visiting with an agent today and uh, he was sharing his spouse has it's, it's a struggle in his home. Yes. And, I I'll, I can share what I what my thought on that. What was how would you respond? You're like he's like she's just. I don't believe in divorce. I believe you're supposed to stay married. Um, yeah. But I I think I would limit the conversations I had with that person about my business. There you go. That's good. Do you I know what I about other things that we had in common? Yeah. If they can't be positive about my business, and I would have a conversation, right? Conflict. Resolution number one, let's just get it on the table. No hard feelings, but I would like you to support my business if I'm talking to my spouse. Yeah. And then if they can't agree to do that or take the action to do that, then I would just have to limit the information I gave them about that to protect 
because and I had this happen honestly when we started Team National. Michelle was negative about it, and I said, "If you're not going to support it, I'm totally good with that. I'm just not going to be able to share with you what's going on." Right. Because the reason I'm doing this is for our family. Yeah. You love our family, and I love our family. She grew in to understand that, and a year later, she apologized, and it became a huge gift for our family, as you know. And I didn't, I wasn't mad at her. It was just where she was at in life. She, she was trying to protect me from getting sidetracked. She couldn't see what I could see. Yeah, I understand that. Here's what I shared with him. This was my thought. This is two cents. I don't know if it's true or not. I said, well, at least she still cares enough to say something to you. Yeah. You need to be worried when she stops complaining. When yeah. she stops complaining, that's when we're worried. But she actually cares enough to say yeah, to complain. Yeah. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Number five would be protect the mind. And, and um, you know, because if you're running for a goal, and I think everybody should be running for a goal, whatever that is. Absolutely. What a shame if you're not. Yeah. You don't that's have where to go you, say, you asked the question earlier, how do I keep running? I always set new goals. When I get to the top of that mountain, I can see the next one. You know, if that's a half marathon, then I could see, okay, maybe I can run a marathon. If that's a marathon, maybe I can do an Ironman, right? And then maybe it shifts and me and my kids want to do a bicycle ride or swim or do a business together. It, all the mountains are different, right? And, and I think the more mountains we climb, and I call them wins, the more wins we stack up, the more confidence we get. So yeah. when I'm trying to help someone get confidence, I want to help stack little wins. Book yes. one appointment. Get one positive conversation on the phone. Have one good showing, right? Stack those wins. Don't try to go sell a million dollars in your first year. Just in the next 30 days, how many little wins can we get? Yes. Oh, I love that so much. Um, and then it becomes a habit. Then it's a habit. You start doing that consistently. Well, Craig, I want to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you for oh, sharing sure. all of so much of your wisdom with us. Um, I learn something new every time I visit with you. And the fact that you let me to have this conversation and record it, it's huge. Oh, so, you're welcome. Thank Thanks you. for you and Juan in leading in an industry where we need more leaders. And you lead in a positive way. You lead your family. I watch your family from afar and you guys are just beautiful. I love the trips you take. Keep taking the trips and having the fun and impacting people, Bettina. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I sure will. <laughs>